Thank you so much for joining me today. What are your concerns with this teacher certification proposal? You know, some of the biggest concerns that we have is that uh, anybody with a bachelor's degree will be able to walk into a school and be called a teacher. There have been uh, many years put into my trying to figure out how to teach. It's an art, it's a science. It's not just about having knowledge and standing in front of a classroom and giving those students that knowledge. You need to have the proper pedagogy. You need to know how to interact with the students. You need to know how to do those one-on-one -on -one, uh, lessons with those students. And so it's it's really concerning that they are deprofessionalizing our profession by saying anybody can teach as long as you have a bachelor's degree. You know, as a parent, I would be outraged that they would, the legislature would be willing to let someone come into a classroom without a certification. I uh, would want my child to be in a classroom with a highly certified educator who knows the art and the science of teaching. No, but the fact of the matter is a lot of these rural communities are facing teacher shortages. And so what's wrong with giving a local district or public charter the ability to look at these applicants to say, here are the parameters under which you can teach and, and make that decision for themselves until they can get somebody who is highly qualified in there? Is it better, in other words, to leave that position unfilled? You know, we have a, an attraction and a retention problem for educators across the state, whether it's urban or uh, rural. What we need to do is respect the education uh, educators and make them feel like professionals. And one of those ways to do that would be by providing an adequate salary. We know that teachers go into the profession uh, taking a 20.9 pay decrease compared to those people that are uh, educated comparatively. So educators, if they got that pay increase and we really respected them, we wouldn't see the problems that we're seeing across the state with uh, these unfilled positions. And once again, as a parent of a child, I think I would rather have my child be in a little bit larger of a class with a certified teacher than in a class with a non-certified person who's trying to learn how to educate children without any kind of certification or background or, or learning theology behind it. You, you, you say that as a parent, but one of the consistent concerns that we hear from teachers all around the state is class size. And so, again, if, if this is a short term solution until we can get to a point as a state where we pay teachers more, where we bump up that career ladder a little bit more, it, should those positions just go unfilled? Doesn't that create more stress for the teachers in the rural communities? So just to clarify, I'm not a parent. I said if I were um, and I as a teacher, I know that class sizes are incredibly important. When I had 24 students in my classroom, I was able to really individualize the learning opportunities for my students compared to having 32 students in my classroom. But I also know all the years of uh, education that went into knowing how to be a proper educator. And so having someone be in a classroom with, with a person that just has a bachelor's degree is very concerning. You know, I, I'm curious, not just with this particular proposal, but with so many education issues that are in front of the legislature, a lot of it is framed as rural districts versus urban districts. And I can pick any number of bills where that's kind of the pitch behind it, that, that this is something that rural schools really, really need. But I'm curious, from your perspective, you have membership in both rural and urban districts across the state, does that oversimplify some of the issues that these districts are facing? I think it does. I do think, though, that there are uh, specific concerns for our smaller districts compared to our larger districts. But ultimately, what it comes down to is the lack of respect of educators and also the lack of funding. Our legislature has a constitutional mandate to have a thorough and uniformed public education across the state. And if we had every school in the state of Idaho be our best public school, we wouldn't see some of the issues that we have. But because too many of these districts rely on supplemental levies that are not supplemental, they actually have to have them to provide core uh, resources, then we have schools that are able to do uh, do things that other schools aren't able to do. And that's not what we need in the state of Idaho. What we need in the state of Idaho is for all of our schools to look like our best public schools. 
You know, since you did bring up supplemental funding, I'm curious your reaction to the public school uh, budget proposal. You know, the bubble, with the public school budget proposal, we would like to see more. We have a $600 million surplus. Our economic uh, outlook is bright right now. And the increases that we're seeing are minimal when you look at the growth that we have in the state. And um, we need to be able to fund our schools so that we have our school counselors, our school nurses, we have the ability to update our curriculum. We have school buildings that all schools, all of our students deserve. We need to make sure that we're funding our public school systems to the best of our ability. Um, and one of those ways to do it is really use that $600 million surplus to infuse uh, our public education system with some funds. We in the state of Idaho are way far above the recommended ratio of student to counselor uh, amounts. And we know that we have social emotional issues within our schools that our children are dealing with and our students. And so we need to be able to have those people in our schools that can help our students. All right, Blaine McAnally, Idaho Education Association. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, I appreciate it.